Welcome to Vertex Wireless Management. Being the landlord to a wireless carrier can be a lucrative partnership. Due to new technology, zoning ordinances, and population density, major wireless carriers are building more of their cell sites on rooftops, church steeples, and water towers. However, if not managed properly, your property can become damaged and lose value because of possible tenant neglect. Vertex Wireless Management has taken the lead in managing the relationship between the property owner and the wireless tenant. Here are a few questions to ask yourself about your current property that is being leased to a carrier or if you're planning to market your property for potential leasing. Question number one, grounding. Grounding is a means of protecting your building or property from lightning and transient voltage. The wireless carrier uses grounding to equip their network and if not installed correctly, can do serious damage to your property. Does the tenant on your rooftop or structure have their equipment properly grounded to protect your assets and building structure? And is the grounding tested annually to verify its effectiveness? Question number two, structural analysis. A structural analysis is the determination of the effects of loads on physical structures and their components. Structures subject to this type of analysis include all that must withstand loads, such as buildings, towers, and soil. A structural analysis must be conducted anytime someone adds or alters a load on a structure, such as a shelter, equipment bay, or wireless antenna. So you need to ask, is there a current structural analysis for the cell equipment that has been installed on your rooftop by your tenant? Does the structural analysis accurately reflect the equipment installed in regards to quantity, size, and weight? Question number three, electrical and telco conduits. Typically, there are electrical and communications conduits running through your property via holes cut in the floors, walls, or attached to the exterior of the building. Did your tenant do floor x-rays prior to drilling into your floors? There's a very good possibility that they may have cored through vertical reinforcing bars or rebar. This would dramatically affect the integrity of the floor loading in your building. Question number four, multiple drawings. In many cases, a building owner may have multiple tenants on their property. Accurate and consistent drawings seem to be either out of date or non-existent, creating inconclusive or inaccurate structural analysis. Do you have multiple tenants on your premises, each with their own set of inconsistent drawings? Do you have one tenant with no drawings or inconsistent drawings? Question number five, repairing or replacing the roof. Throughout the term of your lease with your tenant, the roof will either need to be repaired, replaced, or both. Typically, you or someone from your team is asked to be the lead interface between the contracted roofer and the tenant. Does your building representative understand the tenant's equipment on your roof and the process of moving the tenant's equipment to make room for the repairs or the replacement? Question number six, reference documentation. One of the most important things you can do in regards to your tenant is document their presence during the term of the lease. As a landlord, you need to know the changes your tenant makes to your building on a per job basis. You need to understand the drawings they submit for review and photo the before and after effects to your building. Is your roof photographed and documented more than once a year to verify the condition of the roof when your tenant has an ongoing traffic to and around their leased area? Question number seven, access and accountability. One of the many issues that can arise during a wireless lease is access to your property. You are torn between keeping your assets secure and giving legal access to your tenant's assets. All too often, you'll have to rely on using someone on your staff to be the designated contact person. Does your building representative spend more than 10 hours of valuable, non-productive time a year dealing with tenant issues coordination of contractors, and access issues over a 12-month period? Do you always know when your tenant is going to be on-site or have construction maintenance activities on-site? Do you keep a history of everyone that comes and goes from your facility when working on your tenant's equipment? Is the contractor, or more specifically, the subcontractor who is working on your tenant's equipment properly insured? Question number eight, safety. There are many interpretations with radio frequency safety, or RF, regarding cellular communications. In most cases, your tenant will have their own guidelines for RF safety. However, 
How do you know if their guidelines are good enough for your equipment? Are your employees, customers, and tenants safe from RF exposure? Question number nine. Say what you do and do what you say. There are so many examples where the tenant says they're going to do one thing and wind up doing something completely the opposite. This is a result of the landlord not understanding what was conveyed at the pre-walk meeting, the tenant being very vague in regards to what they plan on doing, or sometimes both. In any case, your property could be negatively affected by the end result. Do you know what you're approving before the tenant starts an upgrade of equipment addition? Do they have local permits outlining what their project entails? Was the work per code and did they receive a final inspection? Question number 10, insurance and lien waivers. Last, but in no way the least important, is the topic of insurance and lien waivers. Having a tenant on your property with their equipment is a liability. Making sure contractors working on your tenant's equipment have proper insurance is crucial and is often overlooked. Many times, there are several levels of subcontractors working on their equipment. Keeping track of all layers, documenting their insurance, and archiving their credentials is essential. Is the contractor, or more specifically the subcontractor, working on your tenant's equipment properly insured per your standards? Has the tenant signed a lien waiver when the tenant has completed a project on your property? In conclusion, these 10 questions are some of the more important topics to ask yourself as a landlord. Every property is unique and may have additional exposure that you may realize. Please let us know if you would like any additional help with protecting your property. Please give us a call to discuss how we can help you help yourself. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video and here is our contact information.